I think the big failing of that liberal sympathy that I was talking about was that it it put a lot of native people, I think, in in a museum. It infantilizes us. Right. You're you're it you're a it Disney. infantilizes us. Yeah. 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 You're like a Disney. Trope. Yeah. It is well because people, real living, breathing people, are in addition to being generally shitty at times. I think um, political problems that have to be dealt with immediately. All people, any yeah. group, any ethnicity, but you know, mystical forest wisdom people. Well, that's more of an abstract concept that isn't necessarily directly derivative of Native Americans. So you could go. You yeah. know, it doesn't it, really have to. It can be policy. the issue. I think the issue is that it can be like like. By the way, just because this really bugs me, um, when, for example, you hear about the nobles, the noble savage in Rousseau, um, Rousseau, first of all, doesn't actually talk about the noble savage in that way. The um, the noble savage is someone who um, is in such a is is so unentangled with other human beings, is so like prior to society that there is no state of war because there is no firm property and people only have relations with each other like animals um, so long as they absolutely require their presence as they're growing up or while they're mating or whatever. Um, the native tribes of Canada or of North America generally are not savages. These are civilized people. They have societies they have communities, they have technologies, they have arts. Um, these, these are people who have been corrupted by, um, you know, the development of, of reason and the arts and things like that on a Rousseauian view. Um, and furthermore, the, uh, the innocence of a pre-societal person in Rousseau isn't such that, oh, these, these were just like human beings as God intended, they were just like perfectly uh, perfectly physically fit, they were perfectly physically fit and perfectly virtuous and just like brave selfless people, no no they were perfectly fit because all they did was stuff that conduced to their fitness and they couldn't rely on any technology whatsoever to ease any of their tasks um and they were peaceable, not because they were well disposed, but because they had a poverty of reasons to not be peaceable. The problem with Hobbes, and this is what Rousseau corrects in Hobbes, is that Hobbes projects a state of war that is only possible given a population that assumes the existence of things like property and assumes the existence of things like amor propre. So the idea that you um, value yourself by reference to what other people think of you. You care about reputation, things like that. You feel as if you have a thing that can be harmed by an offense besides just your body. So that when somebody hurts you, you don't just think to get out of danger, you think of, you know, revenging yourself on that person. Whereas like there's that uh, video on YouTube of like the koala, the two koalas are climbing a tree and one just yanks the other one out because he wants the tree for himself. The koala just falls to the ground and starts crying for a bit. Does he go back and try to get revenge? No. I mean, he does actually try to go and force the other koala out, but eventually he just, you know, he just whines and then goes on with his life. He doesn't hold, like, a grudge. He doesn't go to war with the koala, the other koala. Um, that's that's the noble... Uh, I, don't, I don't actually know if uh, Rousseau even uses the term... I don't think he used the term noble savage. That's just sort of been attributed to him. I could be wrong on that, but that's, that's my sense. Um... So that's what that's about. Um, when you see like the Pocahontas thing where um, natives just had like a magical relationship to the land, like their, their religion of course involved the territory in which they lived as was the case for everybody. Um, but like given, given modern technology, given uh, acclimation to a, a world in which um, in involvement in capitalism is, is requisite for political power and stability and wealth, they'd act like everybody else does. Obviously. Especially amongst our elders, you know, 
the way my elders speak, uh, I don't know that they would be happy to have a political discussion like this because it's just not conducive to their their way of speech and their way of understanding it and their experience and, and perception of the world. And part of that perception is that very classically hokey pokey spirits and all this kind of stuff, you know, uh, rhetoric, like it does come up and let you see it less in young people because, you know, we're going to scare you off. If we do that, you're going to look at us like we're, first of all, like we're, you know, a museum exhibit because it's so difficult for modern society to take, you know, spiritual dogmatism seriously, which is fair. I think that's, that's, I think that's reasonable for young people to, as, well, any person rather to, um, to feel that way. But if our culture and our rights to land and our rights to our heritage are so closely intertwined with the way we perceive the world, um, I think, you know, why is it so hard for everybody to kind of be okay with that? You don't do anything like that to black people. You don't take, you know, black culture and say like, oh, it, yeah, you know, yeah, we got to help, you know, black people. But if only they'd stop with the hokey pokey weirdness and only if they'd stop listening to like rap music. Like, no, you don't say that. You ex a, a lot of people do, though. Just, just saying. A lot of people do. And... I don't know, like, voodoo has been parodied to the point that it's taken as a joke. That's one example. Except that black culture is what is defined by black people. And the same needs to happen, I think, for indigenous people in order for them to start getting comfortable enough to, to really opining on it. So, okay, I think that's really interesting because um, I've gotten a little bit in trouble over this before, and I guess I want your opinion on it. So... I would be one of those younger people who's very off-put by spirituality. I find yes, those arguments yeah. unconvincing, and I think that if you start to factor in perspectives like that, then you start to talk about, like, okay, well, do... Here's something I don't like. So when we're talking about, like, and, and I've been using this language too, so I'm guilty of this, but when we're talking about, like, indigenous religion or indigenous spirituality, what are we actually talking about? Like the word spirit or spirit, the word spirit and spirituality and even religion, these have like cultural baggage, right? They, they refer to specific things. Um, like spiritus originally was, was air, like it was breath. Um, you expire, right? And you also like expire. Um, if you're characterizing indigenous beliefs or indigenous practice or any, whatever you want to call it, in these terms you appear very strongly to actually not be describing indigenous culture at all what you're doing is you're imagining roman religion say um warped to fit the social form or what appears to be the social form in a superficial analysis of these indigenous groups like we're not and so, like, when, when Vosh is saying, like, I'm really uncomfortable with spiritual talk, it's like, okay. But is that spiritual talk really? Or is that just being misconstrued as quote-unquote spiritual talk? It's something else. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you necessarily would be comfortable with it. Um, I'm not comfortable with it, but that's a different question. Does, do, do, do the Israelis have a moral right to their territory because of their thousands of years old, you know, story on this that or the other and like it, it circles back to a lot of stuff and i know that there are arguments for land back which have to do with like the the, the inherent tie to the land that some native groups have that's like correct spiritual. yeah now i'll admit i've never cared about any of these arguments i do care about restitution equality you know uh writing of okay so here this is actually really important so <laughs> the idea of law um obviously the word the word law comes from latin lex but uh, that was used to translate Greek nomos. What did nomos refer to? Nomos referred to divisions of land. Because at the end of the day, sovereignty and political identity and political self-determination has to do with your relationship to a section of land. On this section of land, I have the right to do whatever I like and to dispose of it however I like. That is sovereignty. 